Hey guys, welcome to Rotorite. I'm Bubby FPV. And I'm Ladrid. And today we're going to be taking a look at the all new DJI FPV system. So DJI just came out with the new O3 air unit. This is their newest version of the air unit. Yep. And it's got some killer new features. And it's finally going to give you a way to fly custom built drones that may be built yourself or ones that we build here at Rotorite with the new DJI goggles. I'm super excited about these goggles. It's been a while since they've like released the V2. So to see something that they've making that's a lot smaller form factor. These yeah. goggles are pretty impressive. We actually went into detail about these goggles when we reviewed the DJI Avada. So in this video, we're not going to get too much into detail about these goggles. Yeah. If you want to learn more about them, go check out that Avada video. The links in the description. But in short, they're really impressive goggles. But what was a bummer was when these goggles first came out, the only thing you could use them with were the full DJI FPV drone and the DJI Avada. Yeah. There's been rumors that these goggles are gonna become compatible with the older air units, okay. but that's not true yet. But this new air unit does work with the goggles. So now you can finally use these goggles on a full shreddy freestyle drone. The other thing that this new air unit opens up in terms of compatibility is the radio. Oh, the so the game radio. style radio, okay. Right, you're gonna be able to actually use this radio with your custom built drone. But then when you actually talk about what's compatible with what, it gets all bonkers again. So okay. knowing which combination of drone and controller and air unit, it's a mess, honestly, Here's a spreadsheet, screenshot this. <laughs> this is what you're gonna need to look at. DJI has confirmed backwards compatibility for the goggles in a firmware update, but we don't know when exactly that is. They're aiming for sometime in December and they sent us this compatibility chart for reference at the time of release. In short, if you started with an Avada or an FPV drone and you've already got these, good news, this is gonna work for you you're good to go. Setting up the radio is pretty cool. You just go into Betaflight and all these switches are just pre-assigned to channels. Oh, okay. Right? And even the momentary switches, like the start and stop and this mm -hmm. pause switch, they just trigger a change in channel. So when you press this button one time, okay. you'll see the channel move in Betaflight and stay there. Okay. So even though it's a momentary switch, it, it still it's just latching. So what that means is you can actually use the start and stop button to arm and disarm your quad. That's nice. It's really cool that all the buttons are customizable. The only button that you can't customize is the record button. That makes sense though. Because it just still works. Yeah, so this record. has a, an action camera built on board actually, like super nice HD camera. So that start and stops that. The recording capabilities of this are really impressive and we're gonna get into it in a little bit. So we open up the air unit. It actually comes with antennas pre-installed. And I like how they came with a with a plug and not solders like the Vista did. Okay. This will just make the whole build a lot easier. And I assume hopefully we'll see flight controllers um, also come with just this plug already. Mm -hmm. So plug and play. I like the braided yeah, wire. I do cover. like the braided wire. This just feels like a lot more polished of a product. Just and I think it's better. gonna provide a little bit more protection if you're building your drone and you accidentally touch the soldering iron I've to killed, it. I've killed cables like that Those before. Those old air unit cables, if you even get too close with the soldering iron to it, the old cables would burn super easily. I'm not saying that this is gonna be like soldering iron proof, but I do think it looks like it's gonna be a little more resilient, give you a little bit more room for error. I noticed you said antennas, but kind of interesting. An antenna. No, it is antennas. Because look, it's there's two, two in there. You got two separate connectors going into one lobe. You're still gonna get that kind of multi-antenna, I think it's called MIMO technology going on, multiple in, multiple out, but installation is gonna be a lot easier because you've just got one dongle. Yeah, thing. definitely. Um, But you will have to take, I think you'll have to take off two screws to take it off in order to put the antenna in a mount if you have it like That's that. That's true, yeah, yeah. You have to remove these two screws here. It's a little tiny Phillips head. head. And yeah. speaking of screws, you'll notice the only screws on this unit are holding the unit together, meaning there are no mounting provisions to secure this itself. You're, you're, you're back to double side taping this to the drone. Which I prefer. Really? I think it's just overall more adorable because like, I, I crash hard and like a lot of times my air units will always just move around and I think it's better if it's able to move instead of having the stress on the little through holes where it mounts, if that makes sense. Check out these warning labels. I know there's all the warning labels on this. Make sure to install the air unit in a position that's well ventilated. So this thing this must thing, get really hot. Oh. Oh, it gets toasty. It's toasty. It like I've it hurts. It'll shut itself down eventually and just go into like a thermal protection mode. But before it gets to that point, it gets uh, pretty caustic. This is a product that's unlike what DJI usually makes, which is a complete solution. This is a component product. You need to put this into a drone to fly it. Or if you're uncomfortable with that, we got you covered. We have tons of pre-built drones available with this built into it. So you can have that DJI technology built into a true carbon fiber freestyle drone. Rotorite.com. There's the plug. There's the plug.
got a couple free stuff, hacks up, getting comfortable with the system, but I want to see how much, how far I can push it. So I'm going to see how far around the building I can fly. All the way around the back. All right, so I'm on the other side of this building right in front of us. Video has nothing wrong with it. Looks crystal clear. Um, let's go see if we can go inside. All right, so I'm in the courtyard. Got one little start of there, but nothing bad. Okay, so I'm, I'm in the courtyard. I'm going all the way. Let's see if I can go on the other side of this of these two buildings now. Oh wait. Okay, so this is the very back. I'm gonna drop below safely because. Okay, can I? Let's see. Okay. Oops, it's getting choppy. Okay. Nope. So. Up. 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 Video's getting bad. I'm all the way behind all the buildings though. I'm all the way behind all of them. Video's bad. Like, it's fly... Mm, let's... Let me try to go back. Ah, this is flyable, man. Ah, n not right there. Eh, I mean, I'm all... Dude, I'm so far. I'm behind so many brick buildings, dude. Let me go low to the ground. Let's push through it. Yeah, that's insane. Dude. Let me, let me just go up really high and do the flight back up high of how far I went. So, I'm in between this big building right here. This big building right there this big building right here and then we are back here that's insane basically the back of the whole school when he was like i'm gonna freestyle with the clip-on nd filter on the fpv camera i was like so you're throwing away a nd filter if it falls off it's gone you're not gonna find it so you, mi you might as well just let it go no. i am impressed that it's not falling off yet so it says bandwidth 40 megahertz one channel are you gonna put yours on manual uh yeah give me a second I put yours on manual this is like just a completely different way of managing Wait, channels. All right, three options for bandwidth are 40, 20, and 10. Right, I'm going to, you on 20, 10? I'm going to 20. Okay, I'm on 20 now. Now we got three channels, one, two, and three. I'm on one, you're on three? Yeah, want to okay. try that? Let's so try what that. does the hertz mean? Is that like better image quality or? That bandwidth setting is how much of the band are you using? So there's the 5.8 gigahertz band. Yeah. And the bandwidth is like literally like what hump of the spectrum are you taking over? Higher bandwidth is gonna allow you a higher bit rate. So I noticed when we were at the 40 hertz bandwidth setting, I was getting 50 megabits per second. Okay. And then when we went down to 20 hertz, I went down to like 25 megabits per second, which okay. is what we were kind of used to on the older versions. Yeah. So I think that on auto channel mode, it was just automatically figuring that stuff out for us. Yeah. So that's interesting. If you're in auto, it'll just lower the bandwidth and make more channels available. So yeah. if you're all on the new DJI system, you can all just leave it on auto mode and yeah. who knows how many pilots you can get up to, but yeah. it, at least two, no problem. <laughs> yeah. But my concern is if you're on the auto mode and you're flying with systems that don't talk to this system, like analog or a different HD system, like Avatar or something like that, yeah. the DJI is just gonna spam everyone. I mean, that's using mm. the whole bandwidth. It's on all the channels. Oh. It's on oh, literally. all, yes, literally oh. that's what that means. When it's got that wide of a band, oh. you're using the entire 5.8 band. So basically if you end up flying with other pilots that aren't on this newest DJI system, be courteous, go in, lower the bandwidth probably all the way down to 10 yeah. so that you are on like a single traditional channel yeah. so that more people can fly. I think the most compelling thing about this new air unit is that DJI wants you to be able to use this as your recording camera, yeah. not just your FPV camera. Yeah, so basically it's kind of, they're trying to replace the GoPro or whatever action camera you're using on top. The FPV camera doubles as the action camera. So it records um, onto a little SD card in there. The air oh, unit- It's got built-in storage too. It does have built-in so storage. So the yeah. air unit itself has 22 gigabytes built in. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, you can put an SD card in there to get as much storage as you want. It does up to 4K 60 FPS, which is like, Basically the same as like all of the top end action cameras mm -hmm. from out, that are out nowadays. Pretty awesome. I'd say the one drawback is that you can't go lower 
than 60 frames a second. Oh, you can't? No, I Ooh. personally like to film in 30 frames a second. Image you're looking at when you're flying, you want that to be as crisp as possible, have the most dynamic range so you can see into the shadows. Yep. You want the highest possible frame rate so that you've got the lowest possible latency. Yep. But with recorded image, Maybe you want a little bit more contrast. Maybe yeah. you want motion blur. Motion blur. Yeah. I don't want to fly with any motion blur. That will be interesting because I'm I'm gonna fly with the ND filter. I want to see if that like messes me up at all. 30. You can always record in 60 and then export at 30. It still doesn't look the same. It never looks quite it never the looks same. same. Never quite the same. So we've got a couple of our drones already built with this system here, yeah. so you can see how it installs. It's it's really clean. I do like how compact the system is. Yeah. Like it fits really nicely in my Mark III, which only has 20 millimeter tall standoffs. It's like perfect for that frame. Yeah, it's gonna fit in a lot of the five inch frames that are already out there. However, mounting the camera yeah. is a little bit more challenging. The original air unit camera mm -hmm. was 19 millimeters wide, which was actually kind of the standard width of FPV cameras since the days of analog. This new camera is 20 millimeters wide. Okay. That one millimeter probably won't be too big of a deal, but you might end up wanting to make a tweak to you know, maybe a 3D printed part or something like that, just so that it's not so tight in there. The other difference is the distance from the mounting holes on the camera mm -hmm. to the front of the lens is definitely different on this camera. Oh yeah, it's like super slammed. So what that means is between having that shorter distance between the mounting holes in the front of the lens and having that ultra wide field of view is you're gonna have to push the camera way further forward in the frame than you may have had to before. So for comparison, this is the Skyliner HD built with the original DJI Air unit. And you can see how far back we were able to put the camera and you still don't see any of the frame in the field of view. On that new camera, to get it positioned so that you didn't see any carbon on the recorded image, look how far forward it has to be. That's These crazy. little plastic pieces are actually sticking out in front. Now on our CL2, we actually did some more modifications to it okay. because we wanted to get this set up so that in the recorded image, you not only didn't see the frame, but you also didn't see any of the props. We okay. wanted to set this up so that you could truly use the camera as the main recorded image without having any of the drone in your view. So, yeah. so the front arms are pushed further back rather than being symmetrical front and back. And the other thing we did is we have these 3D printed mounts that can be set up so that the camera is out in front of the frame. Now I know what you're thinking, this doesn't look like it's offering much protection, and it's not. So if you wanna chase some drift cars or do something cinematic where you're less likely to crash, or just in general, the image quality is the most important thing, this is gonna be a great option. And what I like about these mounts is you can just flip them to the inside to get that protection. That's pretty neat. So with one mount, you can have it set up to protect the camera for freestyle or flip it around and get you no frame in view for cinematic. I think it's really cool that DJI actually built in image stabilization to the camera itself. So you can okay. turn it on in the goggles and the recorded image that you pull right out of the O3 is already gonna have some image stabilization. And if you need even more stabilization. It has built in gyro data. So you can plug this into gyro flow and get mm -hmm. like the real study type look that you want for cinematic shots. Um, you do have to be recording in some specific settings, but it works really well with gyro flow. The size of this is small enough that you are gonna be able to fit it into a three inch drone. Yeah. You know, one of those Cinewhoop style drones. So you pair that up with using gyro flow mm -hmm. and you're gonna be able to get that ultra stabilized Cinewhoop style shot. So actually, let's try that out in the warehouse with the skylight. So everybody talks about wanting to look through a GoPro, and I feel like this is. I think this is the, this is the closest we've, closest we've gotten so far. Yeah. The less bit you have on the drone, does it like it's, feel different? Like you have more power? Yeah. Oh yeah. There's there's a bunch more in there. That's a 1550 milliamp hour battery. No. It's a bit heavy for what most people would run on this style drone. Most people would run like 1300, maybe even down to a thousand. Yeah, I'm at 14.3 and five minutes. At this point, I'm just gonna bring it back. I really like to tune on that for real. The video quality, I mean, from from last time, it looks just like what the Avada did.
Alright, so we're here at Orlando Water Sports Complex and we wanted to see what type of cinematic footage we can get using the built-in HD camera on the DJI O3 Arianet. We're going to do some of the footage um, using the built-in stabilization. Out on the boat we have Drew, he's going to be talking to us and Sean is going to be the guy on the wakeboard doing the jumps and the flips and the spins and the whatever they do on that. Yeah, Drone Retriever makes these. So what it is, is inside of here they have some substance and a clip that when it dissolves, it takes five seconds to dissolve. It'll punch the CO2 cartridge and after it does, it turns into an airbag and drops it to the top of the water so we don't lose it. Video, last video. Oh, last video. Yeah, no, video just cut on me. I was right over him. Video, boom, gone. When we've had yeah. drones go down before, we're looking and it looks like a reflection. We, oh, there's no mistake in this big obnoxious orange <laughs> thing. Uh, what, right. a, what, what did the drone do when it fell out the sky? Did you just... He thinks he sprayed it. Yeah, okay. I think I might have sprayed I, it. But... Yeah, because I was like up high though. Like yeah. I was literally above him, video gone. I think so. he sprayed you. I think water got on the drone just killed it. So SD card. Whew, we got we got files. Yeah, okay, that's see. what's up, man. We tried freestyle ripping. We tried an interior fly through. Yeah. We chased some vehicles. Yeah. We chased a wakeboarder over water. We tried to put this thing through as many different scenarios as possible to see like, is this the new ultimate video system? I think that the image quality and mm -hmm. the penetration, like the RF link, is probably the best out right now. Okay. Um, as for the onboard recording, I think. It looks better than like the Action 2, in my opinion. I'm liking it. I'm yeah, really I mean, liking it. I think the DJI Action 2 camera isn't a crowd favorite. I've been using it on my freestyle rigs. I'm happy with it, but I think people generally prefer a GoPro. Yeah. I agree, it beats the Action 2. Yeah, which is crazy. It's literally doubling as your FPV camera. But is it on par with a GoPro? After watching the clips of the wakeboard, like, I was honestly blown away. Like this, mm -hmm. this looked really good. Um, I'd like to, you know, try to color grade it, push the colors as much as I can, compared to GoPro footage to see, you know, how it compares in the in the uh, post production world side. But overall, I think it's like really good. So going into this, I thought the idea of using your FPV system as the only recording device it just was never going to work. I mean, I, and I still think the the theory that what you want to see in the goggles is always going to be so different from what you want to record in terms of the frame rate, the motion blur, even the field of view, mm -hmm. that I don't know if it's the best option, but I do think DJI has done a really good job almost presenting two different images from the same sensor. You, yeah. you get a brighter, more dynamic range image in the goggles than the contrasty, more photogenic image in yeah. the recording. It's interesting how they did that. So I don't know that it could be your 100% of the time recording camera, but I think there's a lot of scenarios where it could be, especially for freestyle. Yeah, I think freestyle is where the using it as your HD camera is really gonna shine. Because yeah, the benefits of weight savings over not necessarily being able to fully optimize the image gonna lend themselves more to freestyle. Yeah. And then it becomes kind of a calculus problem. This is gonna be the most expensive video solution. Yeah. It's gonna be $250 per unit. And you have to put one in every drone. Versus if you bought a GoPro, you could move it from drone to drone. There's also the thing, if you break your action camera, now you don't have an action camera on any of your drones, but you have an action camera built in, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So it's just like, you I know. I think it's, it's the math is how many drones do you need to build? Yeah. So what's the increased cost per drone to put this in every drone? And at what point could you have just bought an action camera? Yeah. And then gone with a cheaper video solution and still get everything you want. I don't know, that's kind of one way of looking at it. A lot of personal preference in that. So if you guys are interested in checking it out, we're gonna be selling the system standalone for all you DIYers, and we're gonna be building a ton of different drones with it so that you can get a Rotor Riot drone ready to rip with the new DJI Air Unit 03 Woo! and have this awesome video quality, both for flying and for recording. It's pretty cool.
Yeah, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button. Let us know in the comments below what you think about this whole HD camera FPV combo all in one because I'm, I'm really curious to hear what the whole community has to think about. Would this. you use this to yeah. record your videos? Would you ditch a dedicated camera and just rip this? I, th I think there might be... I think there'll be a lot of people that will. It'll be happening. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time on Rotor Ride. I'm, I'm trying. Oh my god, record the video segment. Just record it. This freaking guy, man. This I'm trying guy. to record. This freaking guy. Ah!